Hey guys, this is Chubbs Doomer. I know it's been a long time since I've last uploaded a video. I think it's been about five months or more. Um, I can't really get into why I haven't been uploading any videos. All I can say is I'm, I'm just kind of going through a personal mess right now. Um, and that's also why I'm recording with this kind of ghetto, ghetto style setup here. I'm actually using my phone to record this instead of using fraps or something like that. Right now I have very limited capabilities. So... Uh, for now, this will just have to do, and I apologize if the quality sucks. But, you know, since it's been such a long time, I just wanted to show you guys what I've been up to here in my off time. Um, I've been using Unity here recently, and Unity's really kind of exploded in popularity here within the past year or two. Uh, really, with a lot of the Kickstarter projects, I think, is where uh, a good portion of the popularity came in. Uh, because a lot of them are using it, like Wasteland 2, uh, Project Eternity... Uh, I think Kerbal Space Program uses it, the, the Forest uses it, there are a bunch of games now that use it. But nonetheless, I'm going to show you uh, two of these kind of, they're more like tech demos that I've been working on, um, but they do have some pretty neat features in them. So I'll go ahead and I'll pull up the first one here. This is like a tower defense prototype. And right now you can't actually build towers, but you can kind of, uh, the, the towers do work. They actually fire at enemies, and you can kind of get get a sense of what it could be if uh, towers could be built. So you can see the enemies, they just kind of spawn out of this red building here, and they have uh, health bars over their heads, so that way you know how much health they have left. And when they get close to these towers, you'll see the towers turn red and they start to attack. And the towers pretty much continue to attack until the enemy gets out of their range, or of course, until the uh, the enemy's dead. So, like I said, right now you can't uh, you can't build towers. It's more like just kind of watching it, but you can fiddle around with these sliders down here. So I have a game speed slider. You can uh, if you set it all the way down, it it almost goes into like bullet time. And if we watch this enemy here, you'll see it kind of die in slow motion. So you can see it just got blown to bits. You can also crank the slider way up, and the game speed just uh, is way faster than it is by default. You can also control the frequency of the enemies, how, how frequently they spawn. So if we slide this all the way down, there's going to be a pretty, pretty large gap in between the enemies. You'll see there aren't as many coming out. And if we crank this slider way up, they spawn extremely fast, and you can see it's just chaos. And it's really cool if you do this and then lower the game speed way down. You can kind of see all the towers going into work here in slow motion. You can watch the enemies dying, taking hits, and, and all that stuff. So really, I think the biggest accomplishments with this tech demo for me were the uh, pathfinding, the way the enemies find their way around these obstacles. They, they're actually doing this by pathfinding. These aren't waypoints that I've set. At, at, like at each end of the wall or anything like this. The enemies actually know how to find their way all the way around here. Uh, and of course, the uh, I think the other accomplishment is getting the towers to actually know when an enemy is within range. Uh, and Unity, thankfully, uh, gives you built-in features and functions that make these things really easily. Like they have a built-in navigation mesh, fe mesh feature that allows you to really quickly set up a navigation mesh that... Uh, nav mesh agents can navigate around and that's what these enemies are these enemies are nav mesh agents and those agents know how to navigate the mesh that you've laid out so there's there's pretty much no program no programming required to actually get the uh, pathfinding to work and that's awesome uh, and the 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 distance detection for the towers is also really easily done they uh, they give you some functions to easily detect the distance from the tower to the enemy and then whenever the enemy's close enough it uh, of course goes into its firing state so that's the uh, demo for now for this that's pretty much all there is to it I would really like to have uh, the ability to build towers here soon that would be cool if you could place your own towers and earn money from killing enemies and upgrade the towers and all that stuff but nonetheless it is a tech demo not fully featured, or a prototype, prototype slash tech demo, I guess is what I would call it. And now I'm going to show you guys the second thing that I've spent, been spending a lot of time on. And this is a uh, 
more like it's it's like a 2.5D version of uh, the uh, the original Super Mario Brothers. So I've taken it, and instead of it just being straight on 2D, I've given it some depth. So I'll go ahead and fire this up. And for this game, uh, or for this prototype, I should say, I actually have a start menu or a, a, main, a, a title menu or a main menu. Uh, and I've also, as you can see, I've put in a custom hand cursor here just to kind of add some polish to it, I guess you could say, or make it look a little more professional, a little neater. Um, but this title screen right now is still a work in progress for sure. The options button just takes you to a placeholder screen. Here I'm probably going to show you the, the controls, uh, let you maybe set some graphics and sound options, things like that. Uh, and the start game button sends you into the bit of the game that I've done. I'm, I'm going to actually uh, lay my mouse down here and pick up my 360 controller. I've You can control this with the mouse and keyboard or the 360 controller, so you can actually do it either way. But with the 360 controller you can pan the camera left and right you can use the uh, I'm, I'm doing this with the left stick you can use the right thumb stick to zoom in and out smoothly or you can also rotate smoothly and then if you click in the right stick it resets the rotation and the zoom so you can see me resetting the camera there uh, right now, you can't move Mario. These are, you can see it's just a, really just me testing out the sprites, uh, the objects, things like that. This text that's over their heads is just me just trying out different things, seeing if I could get text to be, uh, to exist in the world instead of just existing in the screen, on the screen overlay like the text in the upper left is. Um, so yeah, you can see it's this level's far from complete. I tried to kind of base it on the the actual first level of Super Mario Brothers. Uh, it, the spacing is not quite right between the objects, things like that. But really, this is just a test. Um, but if you look in the upper left, you'll see we have uh, some more options. We can press T to toggle snow on and off, and I'll do that with the keyboard. So you can see I'm using a pretty much a particle effect above the camera to make it look like it's snowing. You can also, I'll, uh, I'll toggle, this, toggle the snow off here, you can also press Y to make it rain and that makes these uh, rain particles come out of the clouds here. You can see like this cloud here over to the right has some depth to it. You can see it's in front of the tunnel because the raindrops are going in front of the tunnel. And then the cloud that's behind the tunnel right here, you can see the raindrops are behind it. So I've given this uh, some 3D depth, so it's a, it's a nice mixture of 2D and 3D. 2.5D as they like to call it. Now, you can of course toggle the rain off as well, just like with the snow. But if you want it to rain and snow, you can press T and then Y, and you can, uh, you can actually have both at the same time. These weather effects are just, of course, me screwing around. Uh, Maybe there would be a use for them in some levels. I don't know, but yeah, these are these are pretty much just me messing around with the different particle effects that Unity can can uh, create and things like that. Just pretty much just me getting crazy with it, seeing what all I can do. But yeah, this uh, this pretty much sums up what all there is to it. Now I also need to make these question mark blocks here animate, uh, just like they do in the original game, and uh, I hope to have a fully featured playable demo here uh, within the next several weeks to where you can actually move Mario and uh, bust the bricks, hit the question mark box to get coins or power-ups, things like that. So let's go back to the main menu and I also added a sort of like a silly little voice over here whenever you press escape and just completely exit the game. Thank you so much for playing my game. So if you've played uh, Super Mario 64, you'll probably recognize the voiceover from that game. But I'm just going to relaunch it here, so we'll be at the title screen. Instead of you guys just having to see it here and just stare at a black screen the entire time. And I, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit too about uh, Unity, just in general. Uh, I would highly recommend checking out Unity if you're interested in game development at all. It, 
it's really good for just about any type of game. You can. It's really good for 2D games now that they have 2D tools, and of course, it's it's great for 3D games too. Uh, I've used UDK, and I've also messed around with Hammer's uh, the Hammer editor for the Source Engine, and I I feel like Unity is uh, is actually a little easier to manage than both of those. I've been able to piece together levels and stuff a lot easier and the scripting that you have to do in Unity is uh, is actually it's you can choose between using C Sharp or JavaScript and if you go the C Sharp route uh, since the ZDoom ACS language is like that uh, for those of you who uh, write scripts for the for your ZDoom maps just like I do making the transition is really easy because the you know, just the overall syntax and stuff is quite similar. Uh, the ACS language uses a syntax that's kind of like, uh, kind of like C plus plus or C sharp or something like that. So making the jump over to Unity has actually been pretty easy. Uh, and another reason that that's been easy, not only because of the, uh, it's not only because of the syntax being similar. It's also because Unity has a lot of great tutorials uh, on their website and. Uh, also, just all over YouTube, um, they also have a really good community for an for answering questions. There's a community site. It's an official site called Unity Answers, and basically, you go there and you post an answer uh, or or a question, and then people can come in and they can answer that question. So if you if you ha have a problem and you Google it, there's a pretty good chance that that problem has already been. Uh, or I should say the answer to that problem has already been provided through Unity Answers. Um, I've, I've really been surprised at just how helpful this community's been just going through Unity Answers and just seeing how many people come in and answer questions and, and really give great examples as well. Uh, great, great code examples and great explanations and things like that. So Unity, because of those things, has really been, it's really been easy for me to learn. And I've had a lot of, a lot of fun messing around with it. I've only been working with Unity now for maybe two weeks, so these things that you've seen, the uh, the tower defense with the pathfinding and the towers being able to detect uh, enemy proximity, and this Mario demo with the uh, the smooth scrolling camera, the particle effects, uh, of course like the textures that you see here, the sprites, I've been able to do all this just after messing around with it for about two weeks. So you can imagine if you if you work with this program for one or more years just how what kind of things you'd be able to do with it so yeah i would uh i, I would highly recommend checking unity out if, if you're interested in game development to me it, it almost feels like a uh more robust version of game maker i've noticed a lot of similarities to game maker uh the one major difference though is that if you want your objects to perform actions you most of the time you're going to have to write code to do that so there's really not much uh, drag and drop in terms of making your objects do things in Unity. You're you're really going to have to get in and write some code. But thankfully, the code writing is actually not bad at all because of the reasons that I already mentioned before: the the uh, excellent tutorials and the uh, the Unity Answers site and all that stuff. So I guess that kind of concludes this video. Hope you guys like what you've seen. I really apologize to all you guys and all my subscribers for the big gap in between videos like i said it's been it's been a long time man i've, I've been through a, a rough time here recently so uh, all i can say is just wish me luck and i hope to be back soon in full form guys and uh putting out more videos so uh, if you watched it this far i really appreciate it and again i hope you like what you saw this is chubbs doomer signing out